Good morning. Bye. I always get that confused, but Happy New Year. I can't believe it, though. Can you? You sort of blink, and Christmas goes by so fast, and then it's like, whoo, New Year's. Anyway, well, it's good to have you here. Thank you for coming through the fog. You know, hopefully that won't affect our thinking today. I hope. So, announcements today, you can see on the back of your bulletin, council meeting next Sunday, and also uh, worship design on the 17th at 10 o'clock. Of course, our Rock Creek Food Pantry, and I've heard more and more of this on the news and stuff about how the food pantries need the protein and food. It's, you know, it's amazing if we kept track of everything that went out in our whole country this year, it'd be, it's actually sort of scary. This is America. We shouldn't have hungry people, but we do. So we want to make sure we keep them in prayer, but also if you have something that you could bring, that would be nice. We appreciate that. Is there any other announcements? I can't think of any right now, but that doesn't mean. Yes, Miss Janet. Oh, that's right. When do we usually undecorate? Next Saturday, at usually around 10 o'clock? Okay, next Saturday. That Saturday. It's the seventh, right? Okay, yeah. So um, put that on your calendar. We'd like to have you. The more hands we have, the faster it goes. So at 10? Mm-hmm, on this Saturday. So Roger needs to know. <laughs> Poor Roger. Okay. Any other announcements? Okay, seeing none, we have a great song today. There's a song in the air. If you'll stand, if you're able, and we'll sing that before our call to worship. to worship today is taken from Psalms 139, 13 through 18. For it was you who formed my inward parts. I praise you, for you are fearful and wonderful. You know me very well.
Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. How profound to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Joys and concerns. Um, any joys and concerns you'd like to share? Here it comes. I have a, a really close friend in, in California, and her significant other has been in the hospital for a while. He had a stroke and then he went to rehab and I talked to her this morning and he went to the hospital yesterday with pneumonia and a blood infection so we kind of need to keep Mike in 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 our prayers his name is Mike yeah okay yes Betty's friend is in the hospital and now has blood infection as well as pneumonia so we want to make sure that we lift him up it doesn't sound good darn it any others Yes, Randy does. Thanks, Randy. Uh, we got Lauren moved this weekend, and thank God, and <laughs> things are looking okay. We got the apartment. Linda helped him clean Friday and Saturday, and we moved him Thursday night. Got home about midnight, I did, and it got done. Oh, thank praise, God. Praise God for now that, just, and you're still walking. Yeah, he's... <laughs> He's still got about two months of unpacking probably before he gets things done. He's never in no big hurry after it's in his place, but well, things will work out, hopefully. It will. Well, thank heavens you've got it done. And you didn't have a lot of snow or anything to deal with. That's always a blessing. Ugh. Yeah, Lauren moved back to his house. So, yes, Connie? I was in Hanson Library Friday. Oh, yes. Cindy's got laryngitis. I mean, there's no voice. So if anybody calls her, you might not get an answer. I don't know if you want to text her, whatever, but I thought I'd let you know. Yeah, she it, That's a miserable place to be. Oh, it is, especially for Cindy. I didn't say that, but Cindy, yeah, and that's hard because you're trying to tell people stuff. Yeah, she texted me this morning and said they were all sick, but I'm sure, for her included, but she said, I'm sorry you don't get to do the uh, out of the box with Matthew. And I thought, yes, Amanda Gale gets it. <laughs> don't tell her I said that. Oh, <laughs> but she was setting me up, so who knows what Matthew will put in that box. So that was a scary thought, but we don't want him to be sick. But that stuff has been going around the sinus stuff and the coughing and the ugh, all that so we want to lift them up but also anyone else who might be ill any others margaret burke had sent us a card it's probably out there you want to read she's doing well and wanted to say hello to all of us um, she's at grace i think in boise and so actually that's been good for her which is nice and also, this week, there's a couple birthdays coming up. You know, people do get older. Is there anybody else in here before I mention the two that's got a birthday? Norma does? No. <laughs> yeah, I'll make things up. Anybody want a birthday? <laughs> Let's celebrate. Well, Janet's birthday is on the 5th. And then I heard that John's birthday is on next Monday. Yeah, it's a big one, huh, John? It's a big birthday. Yeah, you're 19 again. Yeah, so I think we should sing happy birthday. I'm in the mood to sing. Ted, hit it. Okay.
Woohoo! They're special. Puts you guys in our lives. That makes it very special. Any concerns that you may have? I know the world needs our prayers in a big way. And for the new year, hopefully things will shape up, maybe, a little bit. Hopefully. Anyway, we don't know what God has planned, but I know he has great plans for us. Oh, yes, the safety for people driving in the the fog today. Yeah, my grandsons are up on the hill, and I was supposed to go get them, but their parents decided they should go. I don't think they trust my driving in the snow. But I didn't say that, but I thankfully said, oh, good, go ahead, go ahead. But they were excited to go, so I hope they're okay up on the mountain. It might be sunny up there, you never know. Yes, Norma. Trudy, was it going to be your birthday too and you didn't tell me? Well, thank you, Norma. Well, happy birthday to Trudy too. Well, right, we were singing to you also, even though you were being secretive. Well, hearing no more, and I know there's some in our hearts and our thoughts today. Let's pray, because God, I know, answers our prayers. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, you've been so good to us. You gave us your Son. What a great gift to all of us as believers in him who can live forever with you. But there are many today that are suffering from diseases, pneumonia, infections, losses, a lot of hurts. And there are people traveling and people that just need your support and your peace. We just lift them up to you today. All those that perhaps weren't mentioned, but those that were mentioned today, Lord, you know them all. Just as the Psalms said, you knew everything about us before we were even in the womb. You're our creator God, our almighty father our Abba, our Daddy. You take good care of us each and every day. We are thankful, Lord. We thank you and we glorify you. That's why we worship today, is to glorify you. We thank you for the past year. Even with its ups and downs, you were always there with us. And with this new year, we ask that you be with our country, our leaders, our military, all of us in the churches, all of us out of churches, just everyone, especially our children, Lord. Help us to build a good foundation for them. We pray for safe journeys back home and to places where they may be traveling next. We ask that you continue to be with us, help our hearts to be strong for you, and to know that you are truly alive and you are with us each and every moment. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching the disciples how to pray, for as we pray together, our Father, Our next hymn is Good Christian Friends Rejoice.
Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, and John chapter 3, 16 through 18. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Matthew 2, 1 through 8. Visitors from the East. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from the eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called the meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people of Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him too. Now from John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading. Now it come upon the midnight clear.
You do such a nice job. Will you pray with me, please? Father God, you are so gracious and so merciful. I ask today that the words of my mouth communicate the message that you need us to hear today. You're so glorious and so good to us in every way. And I just praise you and thank you for this time that we can share together and worship you. I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I thought we'd start out with a little humor this morning. Santa waited for a little boy named Johnny to climb upon his lap. He said, son, what would you like for Christmas? The little boy looked straight into Santa's eyes and said, first, Santa, I want to ask you a question. Are you a politician? Santa looked surprised, thought, what in the world? He said, no, son, I don't think so. And he said, oh, that's so good. They always promise more than they can deliver. <laughs> so who knows what he was going to ask Santa, right? Yes. Well, we just finished Christmas. So now what, right? What's going to happen? All that dashing around, going to celebrations, you know, seeing people that maybe we haven't seen for a while, eating too many cookies, having, you know, too much eggnog, who knows? I know that I had made resolutions last year that I wasn't going to wait for the last minute to wrap my gifts. But, you know, I didn't do too bad this year. I started a few days early, so I didn't have to do them all in one night. But when I was young, I remember how much more fun it was shopping for toys. You know, my kids now, their toys are a lot bigger, which I don't even understand some of them. And it's, it's just harder. And it's not as fun as seeing those little kids op open up a package and being so excited ooing and aahing, you know, it, on TV they had some of the oh, funniest um, children responding to Christmas, and it was so cute. That's so precious. But truly, you know, I, I thought this year I wanted things to be a little different. I wanted to focus more on the meaning of Christmas than on the gifts. And so I thought a lot about the birth of Jesus. What would happen if Jesus, what would have happened if Jesus hadn't been born? Think about it for a minute. If he hadn't been born, if God hadn't given him to us, would we have had the Bible? The prophets actually were always prophesizing, trying to get people to know the Lord and to know the Messiah was coming. The Magi wouldn't have had to travel for two years to find him. Herod maybe wouldn't have been as cruel, killing those children that were two years and younger. And would we have Easter? We wouldn't have an empty tomb? What would eternity look like for us? Would there be eternity? Things would have been different. So Jesus did change the world, didn't he? He changed the world. The world pretty much celebrates Christmas, some for different reasons, some with a different name. But they like the giving part. Maybe it's the getting part they like. But they like that. And I attribute God for that, that it's a time of the year, especially around our country, that we celebrate giving to others, even though it's sort of gotten out of hand, I think. But then I got to thinking, you know, wow, it's like that movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Have you ever seen that movie? Some of you have, maybe some of you haven't. George Bailey in this movie has helped a lot of people through his loan company. He's given to those that didn't have anything. 
so that they could have a roof over their heads. He worked very, very hard to be a good Christian man. And unfortunately, one time, his uncle, at the end of the year, took in money to deposit, but had left it in a newspaper and couldn't find it. And of course, Mr. Potter, the bad guy, there's always got to be a bad guy in the movies, took it and didn't say anything. So trouble was hitting George Bailey. What, he, what was going to happen? His family, everything would be a mess. So he was going to jump off the bridge. God sent him an angel. I think he sends us a lot of angels that we don't even notice. But Clarence, believe it or not, must be a good name, Clarence. Clarence jumped off the bridge before George could. And of course, George, being the good man he was, he jumped in to save him. But during their process, George basically said, I wish I'd never been born. Wow. Have you ever thought about if you had never been born, what would be different? Well, George finds out that the world that he knew as Bedford Falls became an ugly place. A lot of riffraff, a lot of fighting, a lot of crime, a lot of bars and whatever, celebrations that were not pretty. And I got to thinking, what's our world look like today? Whoa, we're not Pottersville, but we're getting close. And then I wondered, you know, we as good people here, and I'm always preaching to the choir here, we've made influences in our world. We've given a lot. And there's people, as I look thought back when I was a kid, all the people that had made differences in my life. Helen Wall, the Sandersons, you know, I, I remember the Nelsons. I remember Lavella Leg. I remember those people that took extra time to reach out to me when I was a kid, trying to find my foundation and where to go and what to do. I remember Bev and Sandy playing for Julie and I in duets, and sometimes we'd start laughing during the duet. I don't know why, but we would, but they hung in there with us and we'd finish out our song. I remember those things, and I wonder how much of a good influence that I have on people around me at that time, and even today, after the years that I spent in the classroom. And every year, I would have the kids write down a resolution when they came back from school. Usually, it was three things. First, what do you want to do? to help your grade in this class or in school? What could help you in classrooms, in your classrooms to help you do better in school? Be specific, be specific, I'd say. The next, what about your health? What do you wanna to do to improve your health? And third, how are you gonna help people? How are you gonna help your classmates? How are you going to help that lonely boy that might be eating lunch alone? How are you going to do that? And it was amazing, some of the answers, some of them couldn't come up with answers, but I tried to get them to see that people that write down things do them. Do you know 10% of our country write down their goals and dreams? That's why the 10% are more successful than the 80%. And so it's important to write down, and you're gonna have an opportunity to do that on a post-it note in your life today, that you can write down something that would be a gift to Jesus, an after Christmas gift for him, for what he has done for you. But I want you to think about that for a minute. Here the Magi brought gifts, and I think that's probably where the Saint Nicholas who basically started off giving and getting the world to give through a time span. Basically all of that, looking at what the Magi gave to Jesus. He gave gold for a king, frankincense, a very expensive, or a very expensive spice, but myrrh, 
I've always wondered what Mary and Joseph thought when, he gave myr when they gave myrrh, which was given to cover the smell of death. And I wondered, what would they have thought? You give a baby myrrh? I'm sure through the years and through time, they figured out a lot of things, but it wouldn't have been easy. Wouldn't have been easy at all. And I've always thought, I wonder if Jesus, as a young boy, did some miracles. I mean, he was God. So I'm sure there was some influence there. Because even when he told his mother, no, I don't have, you know, it's not my time yet, Mom. I'm not going to turn this water into wine. But he obeyed his mom anyway. The first real miracle that we see. And yet, it's pretty amazing all these things were written down for us so that we have them today. But as we think about a Christmas gift for Jesus, an after Christmas gift, what can you as a person, not worrying about being a United Methodist or whatever, but as a Christian person, what can you give to the world today that would hopefully help someone else out you know, we never think about that gift for Jesus. I've read many times, and even in my uh, Morning with Jesus book, there was a part where it talked about a person wrapping a gift for Jesus and putting it under the tree. And in that gift, she put goals and things that she wanted to do for him to spread the word that God is good and he loves us so much that Jesus gave his life for us. And when you read that, John 13, through, or read 3, 13 through on, it talks about God so loved, he gave. He didn't ask us to buy. He gave without asking for anything back. It's funny, a couple times I've had this happen in my life, and I've never understood it. And it's hard, but I've had a couple people not take their gift. Said, I'm not going to give gifts this year. You keep the gift. And it just always, I don't know, it always makes an imprint on me, thinking, what is going on with this person? That they can't receive a gift. That it's not... To me, it's a big deal because I've looked for something special for that person to be happy, to look forward to, you know. And I never wanted something back in return. But how many times do we think, well, if she gave me a gift, I have to give her one back? That's not what it's about. Because God gave us Jesus. And he's really not, never asked for anything back. But I truly believe that he has expectations for us. Don't you think? I think he does. We can never be sinless. And if you continue to read in that John 3, it'll talk about, I did not send my son to condemn the world. I gave him to give, uh, to give you peace and everlasting life. Jesus talks a lot about that, not judging. And I, that's my goal this year, is not to judge. It's so easy to look at people and think, wow, you know, what are they doing? But I think the biggest thing is we need to pray for them. Because I truly believe in prayer. We need to turn to God and pray, pray more. And pray more on our knees than just praying in the car. I'm a good SOS prayer. I pray a lot when I'm driving or I see something. When I see an ambulance go by, I'm praying for whoever's in that ambulance and the family of that person. But I think there's so many things. So I'm going to first have Jesse come up because Jesse's my go-to guy because he's a good runner, actually, you know. Cross country champ, what can I say? Give each one a post it. I'm giving you a post it. 
You can put this on your mirror, your refrigerator. You could put it on the back of your toilet because you go there quite often, I'm sure. But refrigerator or mirror or something. And I want you to think of a gift that you can give Jesus this year. Might be just to reach out to your neighbor more often. Might be shovel the snow in their driveway if it snows. It might be just to say hello. You know, I, I think it's always funny how cashiers, you know, you start to say hello to them and they're so tired at Christmas time, but they appreciate the hello and they appreciate a good attitude instead of that look that could probably kill you if you really thought about it. But, you know, it's that smile and just taking time to visit with them. I try to do that or open a door for somebody that has their hands full or just open a door and say, hello, how's your day? Or just say hello. You know, we don't do that enough. And as Christians, our life, what we do in our life, shows through. And when you think of the influence, how do you want people to remember you? Do you want them to remember you as a sour, sour-faced person who never speaks? Or do you want them to know you as a Christian who loves them no matter what? No matter how they dress, no matter how they talk, no matter what they do, you still love them as a person. So on this post-it note, now I'm going to tell you something I know for sure. If you don't write something down, that's okay. I can't make you do it. I won't make you do it. But I can tell you, if you don't write it down and post it, you won't do it. You'll think about it maybe today, maybe tomorrow. It's like those resolutions for health. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work out every day. And then after three days, something comes up and you go, oh, I'll do it on Monday. I'll start it on Monday. Does it ever happen? It's so easy for us to put it off. But if you, just a word maybe, just a word, happy, joy, whatever. You know, today I selected Joy to the World again. And I'm not going to get tired of that song, but we don't hear it enough. We do in Christmas time, but Joy to the World is really a song of Jesus coming again. It's not just his birth. Jesus is going to come again. And when he does, we need to be ready. And if we're called to go to sleep and wait, or to be called to him, his side before that happens, that second coming, we need to be ready. We need to make sure that we accept Jesus in our heart. And so many times, it's just like the Christmas, Pat, going by. It's so easy to go by and forget. But when you post it, I always put it on my mirror, because unfortunately I look in my mirror. Oh, sometimes I wish I wouldn't, but I look in the mirror. It's right there, and it reminds me. It reminds me of what gift I'm going to give Jesus this year, this new year. And I would just say, make sure you do it, because you'll be blessed. Jesus does bless us. Right now, the person sitting by you is a blessing. People in this room is a blessing. And you've influenced the world, believe it or not, with your life. Whether it's good or bad, you've influenced the world. And for all of you in here, I know it's been good. But there's a lot of people out there that don't have that to hold on to. And so it's our job to make sure that we get rid of the old and come in with the new. That we remember that Jesus loved us and God gave us the most expensive gift that anyone can ever give, his only begotten son. He gave us Jesus so that we could have everlasting life. So as we remember the Magi coming, we'll get our epiphany stars next week. Whatever that word is, put it up and do it. 
because believe it or not, I think God gives us messages for the time we need them. Like when I open a Bible, there's times that something pops out at me and it's like, ooh, okay, God. I'll, you know, I'll get with it. And I think it's really important to know that. So I'm going to say to you today, now what? Enjoy the new year. Put God in the forefront. Emphasize that. And you'll be amazed at what will happen. God delivers his promises. He never forgets. And he loves us so much that he gave. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, I have a response with the hymn. You can stay seated. It's called Precious Name because Jesus truly is precious. Jesus does. He gave us hope so that we can live forever with him in peace and harmony. Now it's time to give your offering.
Oh, Father God, you give us so much. So we offer up today our gifts. Will you help us and direct us in the right way to go, that we may show others your love and Jesus, that we can go out and touch the world like you have touched us through the birth of Jesus. We thank you so much for everything, for the blessings you bestow on all of us. We pray in your precious son's name, Jesus. Amen. Our hymn going out is Joy to the World. And remember, he's coming again. Yes, Jesus rules. May God bless you today and all days and every year. May you go out with his love and peace today and know that he loves you. No matter what, he loves you and he's always with you. He walks with you. He talks with you. Let him be your best friend. For God so loved the world, he gave us Jesus, so that if we take him into our hearts, we will live forever. Amen.